Let's talk about directions from God. Directions from God. How to be directed in our ministry and our lives by God the Holy Spirit. By the way, is the Holy Spirit a mighty wind or is he a dove? You know, on the day of Pentecost, uh, he came like a mighty rushing wind or that was an accompanying feature. But when Jesus was baptized, he was gentle like a dove. And that's something that I want to kind of lead into my subject with. The Holy Spirit is so mighty, it gives dunamis power, the Greek word that we get dynamite from. And yet, the Holy Spirit can be grieved. Remember that verse? Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. That means don't make him sad. Don't vex him. You know, you got a sensitive child. I, I once had a, grand, a, grand, um, a nephew that I was fooling with when he was little, and I probably got a little too rough as I was fooling around with him, and I said something, and he, I remember him stopping me. He was very sensitive, and he said, uh, Uncle Jim, remember, people have feelings. Whoa. Like, hello. Mark up a rebuke to Uncle Jim. <clears throat> well, the Holy Spirit's like that. He's powerful, and yet he can be saddened by things we say, things we do, things we look at. You know, he lives within us. So everything we do and say and get involved with, he has to put up with it. Oh, some of it so saddens him because he's the Holy Spirit. He also can be quenched or his fire can be put out. Yes, the Bible says, don't quench the Holy Spirit. No, God is going to do what he's going to do. You don't have to worry about that. that. That's not true to scripture. He can be quenched. His fire can be put out. Or you can feed the flames and see the Holy Spirit in a brighter, stronger way. But this subtlety of the Holy Spirit and the way he can speak and his gentleness is no better seen than in this passage. And I want to read to you from Acts 16. Listen. Paul and his companions traveled throughout the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia. And when they came to the border of Mysia, they tried to enter Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them to. Notice, the Spirit of Jesus is another way of saying the Holy Spirit. So they passed by Mysia and went down to Troas, during the night, Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia, that's northern Greece, standing and begging him, come over to Macedonia and help us. After Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. So isn't this interesting? Paul, this is his second missionary journey. He's not with Barnabas but he's with Silas on this trip. And he's in Asia, which is today modern-day Turkey. And he wants to get, go to a certain area, but the Holy Spirit will not permit him. How did that happen? He's not selling Amway. He wants to preach the gospel, and yet the Holy Spirit said, no. We don't know how. Through a gift of the Spirit, through some check, through some lack of peace, something came to Paul and his team that let them know, don't go there. So he moved over this other way, and he wanted to go into Bithynia, which was north of him. And again, the Spirit of Jesus would not permit him. I mean, what's going on here? But he knew that God has the right and wants to move all of us in every way that you can imagine around according to his purpose and will. And he does that through the leading and guiding of the Holy Spirit. So what did he do? He got to Troas, and he didn't know what to do, because where he wanted to go, he couldn't go. Not because he wanted to do something wrong. He wanted to preach the gospel. Most of us think if you want to do a good thing, go and do it. Whatever you see in front of you, do it. It's a little bit more subtle than that. And now he got in the night a vision of a man from Macedonia saying, come over and help us. And that's how the gospel came to Europe 
northern Greece. Then he went down southern Greece. What an interesting story that the book of Acts gives us. Luke writes about this so we would realize it's so important to be led. You know, our GPS should be the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Gentle, leading, sensitive to him. Many times what we do is just kind of crash into anything. We go by what a board voted. But this was so different here because they were looking to direction from the Holy Spirit. And think how we need that now. You know, when we make decisions morally, we have the Bible. This is our only rule of faith and doctrine is the word of God. And it's universal in application. It's for everybody. When it says don't lie, you don't have to pray about it, about lying. You know, should I like my mother-in-law? Don't pray about that. You've got to love everyone. But there's a lot of other decisions in life that are not moral on the, on the surface. In other words, there's no command in the Bible that says go to Greece, go to Macedonia. There's no verse. Or who you should marry or what you should preach on this Sunday. Or what series you should begin or who you should name to become a deacon. But those decisions are important to God and to us and the welfare of the church. And the Holy Spirit is waiting now for us to ask so that he can guide us and lead us. And most of us study the moral uh, mandates of God, but we are so insensitive to the Spirit's leading, prodding, Lack of peace. Wait a minute. What's going on here? Maybe the Spirit doesn't want me to do that. And just think of the messes we get into without inquiring of the Lord. You know, David, if you study his life, when he was at his best, and he wasn't always at his best, like all of us, but when he was at his best, he was always found inquiring of the Lord. You know, the Philistines have attacked this town and, and they're taking advantage of the people. Should I go, Lord? I want to inquire. Should I go and deliver those people? He just didn't say, wait a minute, I'm God's anointed. Wherever I go, God is going to be. He, that, there's no such teaching anywhere, anywhere found in Scripture. It's like the old song says, where he leads me, I will follow. Why did Mueller, George Mueller, do you know that name? Read about him. In the 1800s, he started these amazing orphanages by faith where he fed kids by the thousands without asking for money in an overt way. Why did he start an orphanage? Obviously, it didn't come by, he read it in a, in a manual. The Lord led him to that, made that real to him. Why did Hudson Taylor go to China? Why not to Greece? Because he was led by God. God put it in his heart. This is where I want you. Why did George Whitfield make an important trip to America during the time of the Great Awakening? Study about Whitfield, George Whitfield, and the John and Charles Wesley. They were always looking, God, where do you want us to go? And we've lost that today, don't you think? We preach sermons without ever asking, God, is this what you want me to give the people? We go into building programs. Oh, my, my. Go in a building program without asking direction from God. Lots of luck. See, when you're led by God, there's an umbrella over you where God says, I will supply what you need because I'm the one who led you that way. Like where the Israelites followed the cloud, there was going to be manna and there was going to be everything they needed. And that's the way it is with us. Where God leads us, he will supply. But if we get heady and high-minded and arrogant, and just figure, no, I'm in charge, and God's a credit card in the sky that I just call down whenever I need him. That is, that is bad Christianity. Now, we need to humble ourselves and say, God, no more decisions. I want to be led in everything. When I'm counseling people, I want your spirit to come and lead me what to say. That's such a complex situation when you counsel people. It's got to be biblical counseling, but what to ask, where to probe. How can we counsel effectively without the Holy Spirit's help directing us? Directing us. So how do you get the Spirit's 
direction. Well, we got to pray, but we got to pray with a certain attitude. Have the Bible in our heart. Have an open heart. And why don't we say what Samuel said when he was a little boy? Remember, the Lord called him at night. He didn't know the voice of the Lord back then. So he went to Eli, the high priest at that time. Did you call me? Did you call me? No, I didn't call you. Go back, kid. And then Eli finally realized what was happening. He said, son, go back. And if he calls you again, say, speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. I want that in my life. Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. You know, Lord means we're his servants and we do what he orders us. Let's do that. No better place to be in life. Or let's be like Isaiah in Isaiah 6. When he saw the Lord high and lifted up and his train filled the temple. And the Lord was trying to figure out who will go for us? Who will speak my word? And he said, here am I. Here am I, Lord, send me. Those are two good prayers that I, I want God to put deeper in my heart. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Here am I, Lord, send me. And then we'll find out that the Holy Spirit will lead us in ways we've never imagined, all for the glory of God. Thank you.